Joining me now is Dr. Peter McCullough, a cardiologist and epidemiologist based in Dallas, Texas. Dr. McCullough, um, you and I have gotten to know each other during this odyssey, where these lies were used to hurt people's careers, uh, to silence them, to demonize them, uh, to take away perhaps hospital privileges. And you and others like you were right all along. I know we're not here to just pat you on the back, but you knew it. Osqui and all these other guys knew it. Why didn't the others know it? Or did they, and they just pretended they didn't? We've cited the data, followed this very carefully over time. And many occasions we've said, what's wrong with those who are following a false narrative? Are they simply behind on it? Or is it intentional? Did they know or, or, do, or should they have known? Uh, you know, we still can't answer these questions today. But, you know, at the level of the Supreme Court, to be giving out grossly wrong information in, uh, you know, spoken statements by the justices uh, really takes this to a level that I think historians will record as atrocious. Now, uh, Walensky of the CDC was asked, Dr. McCullough, by our own Brett Baer, about COVID deaths from uh, COVID or deaths from COVID versus with COVID. Now, watch this response. Do you know how many of the 836,000 deaths in the U.S. linked to COVID are from COVID or how many are with COVID, but they had other comorbidities? Do you have that breakdown? Um, yes, of course, with Omicron, we're following that very carefully. Our death registry, of course, um, takes a few weeks to, and is, uh, takes a few weeks to collect. Um, and of course, Omicron has just been with us for a few weeks, but those data will be forthcoming. Dr. McCullough, she completely avoids the question again. He wasn't talking about Omicron, which is relatively new. We have almost two years of data, and they still can't tell us what deaths are really COVID caused deaths versus three, four comorbidity caused deaths? What we know from uh, sources actually on the CDC website, but also the Italians have recoded their deaths, it's clearly, uh, you know, basically 10% or fewer of all the deaths is it purely driven by COVID-19 syndrome? The Italians think is 3%. The rest of it is largely contributed to by other comorbidities. I mean, the best example would be Colin Powell. Colin Powell, uh, you know, had terminal myeloma. He was fully vaccinated. He died with COVID. Uh, you know, people didn't make a big deal out of COVID being a determinant of death, appropriately so, because he was at the end of his life. That That is uh, what happened to Colin Powell is common to uh, many, many of the deaths we've seen in the United States. Again, you're right. We knew this data out of Lombardy, the Lombardy region of Italy, in March and April of 2020, which is what we were talking about at the time, was hypertensive, diabetic, high BMI, uh, you know, uh, very old individuals generally. That data was there in the first two months of COVID. Uh, it's, it's very curious as to why this is all ignored. I have to ask you, though, about this push Dr. McCullough, to boost Americans as, as fully vaccinated. So university students are told you have to get boosted by X date or you're not welcome on campus. What about that given Omicron? At this point in time, the mandates uh, should be completely dropped across the board. Uh, Omicron has been several things. One is a huge syndromic change. It's basically a very similar to getting a head cold. For those who are uh, previously immune and those who are vaccinated, it sometimes is almost an imperceptible mild syndrome that could last a few hours or a day or so. Uh, it is immaterial to vaccination. There are now several studies, as, you, as was pointed out, that there really is no observed vaccine efficacy that we can see in community studies, and we wouldn't expect any protection against hospitalization and death. The, the virus has simply outmutated uh, the ability for the vaccines to have any so, control. So, so, Dr. McCullough, the CDC, though, is already pushing for the fourth booster shot. The New York Times is reporting that some people with weakened immune system can get a fourth dose as early as the coming week. And other recommendations uh, we expect to come regarding uh, the fourth booster shot. What, what's going on here? Is this a Pfizer deal? Is it like, what, what is this? Because it makes zero sense. It, it tips the scales far more towards harm than benefit, because if there's no anticipated benefit, we know with each injection, there's what's called a, a reactogenicity, that with each injection, the body actually uh, reacts more severely 
to the vaccines. And, you know, sadly, there have been far too many deaths that have occurred shortly after vaccination, uh, far too many hospitalizations, uh, injuries, uh, children with hearts being injured, myocarditis. And now the CDC is reporting in the VAERS system permanent disability. Dr. McCullough, thank you for being a voice of courage and wisdom throughout this entire pandemic.